just when I thought I saw it all, apparently French fries equals or gives us a good indication of what consumer sentiment is. So fries tells us how many people are ordering French fries with their orders tells us whether or not consumer sentiment is good. I guess this is the real thing. I thought it was a joke when I first saw this article. Couldn't believe it, but apparently I did a little bit more research on it and it's true. Economists uh, actually believe in what is called the fry attachment rate. Basically, that is the idea that if people are ordering French fries with their burgers, the economy is doing good. The less people that order fries with the burger and just skip the fries and go to the burger means the economy is doing worse. And this is a real thing. You can look it up. As strange as it sounds. I guess in some weird level, it does make sense, especially with these French fries, the prices these days, right? Some, sometimes $5 for an order of French fries. So it's not like it's insignificant, it really is. So they're saying that the economy's doing good and consumers feel great about the economy because again, the, uh, the French fry rate is holding. I have a major problem with this because we all know, and again, I talk to a lot of small business owners on a daily basis, uh, people are feeling the crunch. I, I don't think that the French fry thing is really, really, true, truly uh, a good indicator of consumer sentiment. We know that inflation is out of control. If you haven't seen it, watch my other video on, on the CPI and my, and, my, and my interpretation on why we have such massive inflation. But really, consumer sentiment, obviously, uh, you know, is multi-layered. You know, some parts can be doing you know, well, other parts can be doing poorly. And in my research and, and some of the things that I've, I've looked at, the bottom line is, is that you have, you know, we have a class system here in the United States. It's terrible. It shouldn't be as bad as it is, but it's getting worse. We know that, right? The middle class is getting absolutely crushed. Uh, and it's a sad thing because the American dream is what we're told we're all working for, right? We're in school. Uh, we're told, you know, it's the American dream, the American dream. White picket fence, uh, house, uh, you know, marriage, uh, two kids, 2.2 kids, right? That's the American dream. Uh, and work, save, invest, retire, you know, and, and you know the rest of the story. The problem is that's been completely derailed because our middle class is getting crushed. Now, the bottom line is, is that the upper class is doing quite well. Yes, it is true. Uh, stock market has been up. It's had a, a, a couple of great years. Uh, housing prices are up. Asset prices are, are clearly way up. Well, who has the assets? The top one, two percent have the assets. So, of course, they're doing just fine. So when they go to order the, the, the burgers, they're getting two fries. That is true. The upper class is doing well. The middle class is getting squeezed more and more and more. And the price of uh, everything because of the massive inflation is just off the charts. So the middle class is getting squeezed. And we want to talk about the actual, you know, bottom uh, lower class. Uh, you know, bottom middle class even. And I hate to use that word lower class. This doesn't sound right, does it? But but it is what it is. It's the definition. You understand what I'm saying. You know, the people that don't uh, make as much money, uh, especially younger people, Generation Z, uh, older millennials, um, they're actually getting killed because they're just literally working to put gas in the tank. Matter of fact, today I spent nearly $5 a gallon for premium again. I couldn't believe it. Is consumer sentiment really, really good? Depends. Talking to rich people, the haves, absolutely, they're perfectly fine with it. My stock portfolio is up, my house my house is up, my investment properties are up, my investments are doing quite well. Hell yeah, I got money to spend. Give me the extra large fry, supersize it. Uh, but for the middle class uh, and for you know the lower uh, middle class, they're getting absolutely hammered by uh, the massive inflation uh, and by the difficulty, obviously, in, uh, in, in the job market. Problem you know, with the job market is, is that, again, there may be a, a lot of jobs being created, but they're all part-time, low-paying jobs. It's not like there's a bunch of high-paying jobs being created. So the job markets, you know, the numbers for politics and political reasons are being, you know, baked uh, with regards to the, the job numbers looking so good, but really when you when you look at the part-time jobs and the low-paying jobs, that's where any of the, any of the job growth is, is going. Matter of fact, for good, solid, uh, middle-class paying jobs, uh, we've actually lost a million in the last couple of years. Um, and I'll do a separate video on that. French fry theory, again, uh, you know, it's, it's tricks. It's tricks, it's baked. Uh, again, I guess that's a pun, right? Or it's deep fried. Yeah, the, it's deep fried. It's a deep fried theory. Uh, because again, we know it's just not, it's just not true. When our, when our politicians and our pundits love to, to cherry pick 
the data and, 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 and things like this to then be able to say, oh, the economy's doing great, you idiot. You know, you you complaining over there. Stop complaining. Quiet down. Hey, you, you poor people, quiet down. The economy's doing great. I just ordered two large fries with my Big Mac. That's the BS we get told. That's what gets shoved down your throat. And that's kind of what pisses me off. Uh, it gets me fired up. Gaslighting is just unbelievable, you know, and you can't get away from it. The gaslighting is just unbelievable. It's a shame and it does not have to be this way. Uh, we have to make some changes. We have to hold people accountable for, uh, you know, gaslighting us like this and this kind of propagandist nonsense that the economy's doing great. We know the economy's not doing great. And we know the vast majority of American people, 70%, 80% are getting absolutely killed. They can't afford just the normal stuff. Can't afford the roof over your head. Can't afford the high energy prices. Can't afford the, the $5 a gallon gas in the car. Can't afford the food prices. Oh my goodness, the food prices are again, are also, uh, well, they're flat, but they're not they're not coming down. We're not, we're seeing, we're not seeing any deflation. In, in food prices. So we're up 25% on food prices overall. And you talk about meats and other staples, we're up 40, 50%. We all know this. Uh, and people are just getting killed. You know, you can't go to the grocery store. You get a little, little bag full of groceries is a hundred bucks. You know, it's like two days worth of food. Um, we are getting killed. And the gaslighting and the nonsensical, you know, fry attachment nonsense just to gaslight us into going along with this and, you know, feeling good. It, it's just a shame. We've got to hold these people accountable. We've got to hold them to truth without a valid media and, and valid, uh, uh, you know, financial uh, uh, analysis of what's going on. If we don't, we can't get truth in that. We can't make the moves we need to make. This becomes the problem. Not that the propaganda isn't irritating. Of course it is. But then if you're given the wrong information, if you have the wrong data and it's fed upon us, well, then we can't make adjustments as needed. And this goes in, obviously, to my small business uh, you know, people, uh, you can't make the adjustments needed in your small business if you're constantly getting gaslighted with nonsense like this. Uh, the, the French fries are, are doing great. You know, don't worry about it. The French fries are doing fantastic. Meanwhile, your, your small business is getting is getting killed with energy prices and uh, suppliers increasing prices over and over and rent going up and everything else. Uh, and more regulations coming on and, you know, all the other things that put pressure. Uh, now they're talking about wanting to raise taxes. So, we know that the reality is not this elitist nonsense. You know, the reality is, is the vast majority of people and the vast majority of small business owners are getting absolutely killed by uh, the, uh, uh, the economy. It, again, top to bottom, uh, as far as that goes, as far as small business owners and, and, and consumers, most consumers go, again, we, you know, we're talking about how great the 1% is doing. We're talking about how great the 1% or 2% is doing. Okay, yeah, what about the other 98%? That becomes what matters, the 2%. Again, the, the whole system is set up to fleece the lower classes so the, the upper classes can, can enrich themselves. Matter of fact, I wrote my book, Maximize Your Now. And one of the, the, the uh, biggest motivating reasons to write that book was this caste system that we're in. Uh, this class warfare that we're in. And this has been going on for for 40 or 50 years where the middle class is getting absolutely crushed uh, by the system. Uh, and the system is rigged. It is. And anybody who's being honest will tell you that it's rigged for the upper one, two percent. No matter what happens, economy goes good, it goes bad, they make more money. And it's rigged against the middle class. And it's very rigged against the lower class in, you know, Gen Z and, you know, the up and comers to be able to even get into the middle class. Gen Z can't even afford a house anymore. You know, when, when I'm Gen X and, and, and when I was coming up again, of course, the, you know, the idea was to get a house in your mid twenties, maybe late twenties at, at most. Uh, and that was, you know, uh, easy to do back then, as long as you took, took your job seriously at all. Uh, and since then, obviously it's gotten more and more difficult, and more and more difficult. Uh, my first house that I bought, I was 27 years old, about for $117,000. My payment was $1,000 a month. And that was at, with a high interest rate back then in, in 1997. That same house right now, I can go look on it on Zillow. It is $380,000. It is 380% 
higher than when I bought it in 1997. And I, we can do the math. Nobody makes 380% more money they did than, than, than they did in 1997. Maybe 25%, 30% short. Maybe maybe even 40. Okay, I'll, you know, some of the numbers I see, okay, we, we'll, we'll say people make on average 40% more money uh, now than they made in 1997. 40%. That's not 380%. Housing is going to completely take it away from younger people, take it away from the vast majority of the middle class at this point. Uh, and we're getting gaslighted with French fry crap. We have to hold these people accountable. We can't keep letting them do this to us. We have got to get our leaders to be accountable to telling us the truth, giving us the real data so that we can make proper decisions. I want to help you do that. And I also want to help get you up to making the money that's necessary to still live the American dream. Even though it's more difficult, and I'll be the first to say it, you can still live the American dream. You just have to learn how to make more money. One key to do that, and I recommend this to everybody, of course, I'm going to you know, break my arm, pat myself on the back. You've got to read my book, Maximize Your Now. The link to it is in the comments. If you like hard copy books, you can still get it on Amazon. Uh, it still sells well there. But if you want it for absolutely free, not a problem. There's a link below. Get my book on audio. I read the whole book and I actually add a bunch to some of the chapters uh, as time has evolved uh, to give you some greater insight into what I was really trying to convey in that chapter. Uh, everyone that's, that's read my book, everybody that's listened to the audio version of the book has all said this is a game changer. Go get my book. It'll help at least get you going and at least help get your mind where it needs to be so that you can continue to fight these uh, these these people that try to mislead and misguide us and then hold our people down. We need to fight back. Knowledge is power. Get my book. Listen to it. I want your feedback. Put a comment in there what you think about it uh, after you listen to it. It's very easy. couple hours is all it takes to listen to it. You can do it while you drive or while you're working out, etc. Uh, but I definitely recommend it. And then it, it'll help making my, my podcast my videos a lot more relevant to you as well. Together, we can get stronger. Together, we can get better. Together, we can hold them accountable. Together, we can learn how to outrig the rig of the system. Too big to rig. I like that. You might have heard that somewhere before. Too big to rig. You want to make your money-making abilities too big for the system to rig. That's what I had to do, and I'll help you get there too. All right, guys. See you on the next one.